download my free legato course right now and learn to play fast in the fastest way possible. So welcome to the funkiest challenge of them all. And this is something I spent quite a lot of time on, but it really wasn't so much to connect, first of all, uh, the, the, the patterns, which is what these videos are about. And if you haven't watched the previous five videos, go back and do so. Start with number one, and then take me up on the challenge, and then move forward like that. Um, what we're doing here is something new. We're, we're actually trying to break up the, the scale shape playing that we, you know, get get so good at when we play the scale up and down. That's another, you know, issue with playing scale shapes up and down is that we become very good at it until the point where we almost can't do anything else. So when we play solos, it's like up and down the scale, like the staircase, like this, up and down, up and down, and we don't do any... Here, how the pentatonic scale completely changes its sound when we're... when we break it up and stop playing it up and down like a like a staircase. Um, so that's what we're going to do now. The, the cool thing about this is that it, it expands how you see the scale all laid out on the fretboard and it makes it much easier to move to the next shape. So you break out of the visual, the visual uh, limitation we often have. Where suddenly you can see the pentatonic scale in a, in a more, much more loose way because you are challenging yourself on the way you, on that sequential way of going up and down from one to 12 and back again, right? Or one to eight. So this is really important and it's, it will really change the way you play. Basically, it will change the way you play your solos and the whole sound will change once you go into this. Do this for an entire week with every shape that you know already, right? And I promise you the, the results in your playing style and the results in, in how easy it is to go horizontally will change completely. <laughs> so what am I doing here? Sounds odd. Sounds fusion-like. Well, what I do is I break up my two note per string to be only a one note per string pattern. And then I shuffle the notes around so I create different one note per string patterns with my pentatonic scales here. I'm just gonna do an example for you. In the first position, we got the A minor here. And what it does is it just forces you to play in a, in a freer way where you break up the scale pattern playing up and down. And you develop a whole, you know, you force yourself to really have that to have that overview and it allows you to see the notes in a different way, um, in, a, in a looser way where you're not tied into these vertical shapes. So let's look at it. If I start, for instance, on this note in the first position, the first position minor pentatonic here from the fifth fret would be all the notes in the first finger are in the fifth. On the top two strings, we got the eighth fret and then seven, seven, seven. Uh, and then on the low here, we got the eighth fret as well. So if I hit this note, and that is my one note per string. You know, uh, I could go for this one, but that would mean two notes per string, right? So I go for this one, select that one out. I could have done this with this one. We can do that afterwards, but fifth fret, high E string. Then I go to the next string because I need another note. And since we only allow ourselves to play one note per string, I go to the eighth fret. And this is the system. You start here in this end of the fingers. Start here, and then you go there. You shift strings again and go back here, then new string and you go back here. It could be the third, fourth, but it's in the other end of your fourth fingers here. So if I start down in the vicinity of my first finger, I go to the top note on the B string, which is the, on the eighth fret. Then I shift string because I only want one note per string. I have to go because of my rule to the fifth fret. So I go, right? And then I shift to a new string. I'm not going for the fifth fret on the D string, but rather, since I go from back and forth between the two outer points here, I go for the third finger in the seventh fret on the D string. Then I go for the A string fifth fret, and then for the eighth fret 
on the low E string. So I get... Right? And suddenly I have a scale shape on top of my scale shape that sounds almost like an arpeggio. And when you mix that with your two note per string patterns, it's really awesome and it inspires you to do new things. So you could do that. You could have started just to make sure you get this. Uh, you could have started on this note, right? In the eighth fret in the same shape. But then the next note on the new string would be in the fifth. And the next note would be in the seventh on the G. Always back and forth, back and forth. So that gives you a completely different result. Right? And then once you start using these little structures, the easiest thing is to just start with three, three string patterns so you get three notes. So say I'm in another position like the third, where I have the notes in the 10th and 12th on the high E string, and then the 10th and 13th on the B, and 9 and 12 on the G string. If this was my pattern, I would go, okay, then I have to go to 13th, B, and then not the 12th, even though I could, it's not the same finger, but I'm going to go to the other end on the G string down for the 9th. All right? If I were to start on the top string or top note on the high E string in this shape, I would go, right? Just a little shape like this can be very insp inspiring when you when you play. Let me just play um, something like an E minor seventh with the added ninth in the bottom. And then let me see what we... Right? So I use that little... Oh, I could go... And then I, you know, I, I play from that. So... So two note per string right there, with a little position shift, and then I go back to my... So I start my line with the one note per string. And then I go into sliding on one string. Right, and then... you to focus when you do this because you have to visualize the shape and then okay and then this one right. Right, sounds weird if you don't emulate if you don't you know expand on it so I could go on purpose of course but this is really a, such a cool thing to play around with and as I'm improvising here I'm listening to how these weird structures sound and then I'm uh, so, okay how can I end these three notes All right and and that improvising also requires me to, to really focus on the scale shapes because I have to oh, where am I here okay what's the next note so as I'm building lines that sound new and original, I try to end these little structures, <laughs> then I'm also focused on the scale shapes because it, it, I require that. You know, there's no just blah blahing against it, you know, through this. You have to really... Right? You have to really focus and concentrate, and that is such a good exercise. So do this for a week. It will really benefit your, your feeling. Of, and when you can break up the vertical shape in your mind like that, which it requires you to do, then suddenly you free up your mind to also be more free on the horizontal level. So you can go...
right? Really uh, does the most amazing thing for your for your soloing. But let me just play the, the whole shape for you slowly. Develop an exercise here that you can do in the first position, then you can take it to the other positions because I'm just following a system. We start on this note first. And it's the first position shape here, right? So you mark that out in your mind first and then you go. And then from here you can go down and say, okay, let me let me turn around and go up by playing the lowest note in this, but that immediately turns the whole thing around. So you go. Right, so now I played every note in the scale shape. And this is your exercise. Right, really, it feels really weird in your fingers because we're so used to, to have string shifting be the exception and the playing on one string to be the rule, right? <laughs> and it also changes the sound of the whole thing. So we'll look at it, go down the other taps and then start simply practicing this simple pattern. You can of course move it to other like the sound of these because you just get random random arpeggios you can sit down and figure out what they are but you can just enjoy what comes from each position in the minor pentatonic here and really start playing around with it so do this for an entire week, and I'm not talking about some of the time, I'm talking about every single time you play solos, you use this rule, right? So this is the only thing you can do for an entire week, and you get the most out of it. You try to make it sound as cool as you possibly can when you're playing up against the jam track or your looper pedal, which I assume you have, because it's an essential tool to have a looper when you're practicing soloing. Um, and then go download the uh, charts, the taps, everything, from our website, just click the link below the video. And I really look forward to seeing you in the next lesson here, which is not really a lesson, which is a challenge. And I ho so hope you take me up on it. Even if you just take one of these challenges, right? You don't have to say, oh, I don't want to commit for the, you know, seven weeks. Just commit for one, right? If there's any one of these challenges you really like or that inspires you, then just focus on one for a week. See what it does to your playing and then evaluate and make a new decision after that week about what you're going to do. If you haven't watched the other videos in this series, go back and do so immediately. You can always practice as you watch them, which will really, you know, practice something repetitive and become even better at it. Uh, so, see you in tomorrow's challenge. Subscribe for more free videos. Do it. Do it now. Do it.